near zero, where can you find value in a low to no yield environment? And joining us now is Eric Sprott, CEO and CIO at Sprott Asset Management. His main hedge fund has a long, short equity strategy with $10 billion in assets. Over 80% of his fund is allocated uh, in precious metals. And uh, is there anyone that likes QE3 more than you, Eric? Uh, I don't think anybody has quite the concentration that we have, Joe. But we're happy to have it, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you're happy to have the concentration and happy to have uh, uh, QE3. Um, at this point, I mean, I did, do you ever take off some positions when, when you've gotten what you wanted? Haven't you gotten most of what you wanted already? And, and, and aren't you thinking about maybe standing to the side or no? Well, Joe, uh, it's interesting. I go back to uh, the reason I got in gold was, into gold was in 2000. And uh, at that time, there was some wonderful work done on the gold the supply-demand uh, market by a guy named uh, Frank Veneroso, and he basically suggested there would be a shortage of physical silver in that year, and he wrote a book called The 1998 Gold Book. And um, because the Nasdaq had gone down, um, and we ran then only long, only funds, that I well, where can we kind of hide out here? And I thought gold was the obvious answer, and precious metals generally. And um, it, you might be surprised to realize that the... Uh, the gold stocks since the uh, 2000 bottom are up something like uh, 1,500%. Uh, gold is up 600%. And in a way, I call it the great wealth re redistribution because those who have invested in gold and silver uh, have prospered uh, quite nicely. Uh, to your question whether I want to stay with the trade, uh, the reason I would stay with the trade, and you mentioned QE3, um, I never would have imagined when I got involved in gold that I would have the benefit of kind of irresponsible money printing, uh, bank runs that are ongoing, as we've witnessed in the various countries in Europe. And those two ingredients, along with the QE3, which has been announced, I think will be a huge tailwind for, um, for gold, uh, gold and other precious metals to go higher. You also... Um point out that, uh, uh, that central banks save the big banks and that the financial system at this point, in your view, it, I mean, it might have been a temporary save, right? I mean, we're, we're still, we still have a lot of, of risk that could come in the next few years, and, and gold answers uh, your need for, uh, for covering your uh, strategy there, right? Sure. Well, I mean, I go back to, I think one of the fundamental problems we faced in the last decade was the over-leveraging of the banks which culminated in the failure of Lehman Brothers and uh, essentially the failure of many other uh, companies but uh, they weren't allowed or weren't, weren't forced to liquidate. Lehman was uh, the one time that someone's been forced to liquidate and we saw what nearly happened as a result of it. You know, we've had many other um, companies that one way or another were either taken over, bailed out, Fannie, Freddie, AIG, various banks around the world, the Spanish banks, the Greek banks. Now we do it with governments. And I think all of those things suggest that uh, the financial system is quite destabilized. And um, I, I agree with uh, Governor Plosser of the Fed that um, QE3 is not likely to work, just as QE1 and QE2 didn't work. When we look back at you know, where we were and where we are, and we've had all this printing and all this deficit creation, and you know, we really have accomplished nothing. In fact, we've gone into reverse in terms of job losses and numbers of homes sold in the year and cars sold in the year. So I don't see the, uh, the QE3 as being uh, substantive in terms of helping the economy. Eric, it's Neil Kashkari. As you, as a big gold investor, how do you think about the future of inflation? At PIMCO, we're always debating, is the future 3% inflation? Is it 4% inflation? With all this money printing in the US and in Europe, there's a risk it's higher than that. Do you have a view? Sure. Well, Neil, thank you for the question, and I, I find it rather interesting. I, I read Bill Gross's articles, and I could see, going back to May, that looked like Bill was uh, shifting his stance somewhat when he, in that May article, suggested, you know, maybe real assets are a better investment, and subsequently he said, well, he wasn't sure about stocks, and he wasn't sure about bonds, and, you know, he's tweeted that maybe gold is a buy. And I think that uh, inflation is likely to heat up. I mean, I think it's continually underreported. For the average person in the 99%, I don't think they believe for one second that inflation is 2%. And I think that uh, as incomes aren't going up by that much, the whole 99% is under extreme pressure here. I think it creates more stress on governments and the banking system ultimately. And you want to have your 
your assets in something that's that's real that can benefit by the debasement of currencies that's basically going on in uh, all the developed world's central banks. Larry? Uh, <clears throat> the, the, the real question is timing. Um, you know, when do you think this is all going to come apart? I mean, the, the end game has got to be that you can't print money to get yourself out of a problem. But you can print money for quite a while. So uh, yeah. is this going to go on for one year, two years, six months, or ten years? Yeah. Well, it's a great question. And uh, when you ask the question, when do you think it's going to fall apart? I mean, I probably would have thought it would have fallen apart many years ago. Uh, but I never would have imagined that we would have bought into money printing. I mean, it just seems rather extreme to me that as investors we accept it as a palliative to the situation, which it certainly is not. So um, we can keep the markets void. I think uh, Chairman Bernanke basically measures himself by how he deals with the stock market and how he deals with the housing market. Uh, they have been kept up here by the hope that something's going to happen, but I think when you re review the results of QE1 and QE2 post QE1 and 2, you realize that the market gets into a bit of a funk. Maybe we're in that funk here right now that we kind of have come to grips with the fact that yes, it's been announced, but maybe it won't do anything because most of what's being done is to help the financial system, not necessarily the uh, the man on the street. You know, we talked about some dire stuff earlier, uh, Eric. I, I, I we're not predicting that, but I guess. Uh, there's a, a certain probability to, to some really frightening things happening within the next 10, 15 years, I, I, I guess. Well, Joe, I mean, I would say there's been frightening things happening for quite a while here. I mean, I mean really Lehman. frightening. Like we're, we're used to, <laughs> we're used to, you know, we don't worry about shelter that much anymore, food that much, yeah. safety that much. We, we have a yeah. society that we think can't go back to. Right. You know, uh, you know, decades ago, and and maybe right. maybe sometimes, uh, you know, we assume we can go to the supermarket and buy all the food we want. Right. Well, quite frankly, I don't we really, I don't often go there. I mean, it's it's you know, know that it's a worry, and I'm more interested in the investment field and what we do about it as investors. Yeah. Well, hopefully, you'll be able to uh, go buy right. it with, with with the money you make. Hopefully, you'll be able to go buy a store that actually has those things, uh, you know, and and not get uh, killed on the way to the store. Uh, I, I see what you're saying. We, it's there's, there's a time and place for for that, but you know, with gold bugs, we always got to ask that question because I know you guys all got the you know the holes in the backyard and all the bottled water and everything. So I know you're ready if something does happen, right? Well, um, I think you have to be prepared for reality, <laughs> and, and you know. Well, uh, and when we see what's going on in the world, I mean, it's it's you can, one can hardly argue that uh, prudence is uh, is very it. much warranted here. I, so. I, I made the mistake of watching the road with uh, with the what's he a Vigo uh, Mortensen, Vigo and uh, I'm petrified. I, I'm tell you, I'm going to go take karate and, and carry around about a gun and two thousand dollars worth of gold everywhere I go. Eric, thank you. Great. I appreciate it.